Apple's new M1 MacBook Pro and even the new MacBook Air have a lot of new features to offer. In this video, we're going to be talking about the new incredible 2020 M1 MacBook Pro 13 inch, but keep in mind that a lot of what we're talking about also is going to apply the new MacBook Air. Let's go ahead and dive in. Starting off with Wi-Fi 6. Wi-Fi 6 has been around for quite a while now, and Apple has been building it into their other products. We've seen it in iPhones and iPads, but we really haven't seen it all too much in the Macs. Fortunately, it's here now. In both the new MacBook Pro and the new MacBook Air, we have Wi-Fi 6 support, which should yield a better battery life than when on a Wi-Fi 5, and should give improved speeds and better performance in higher density situations if you had a lot of networks going on. We also have support for the new USB 4 protocol. Now, it should be clear that while there is USB 4 support on the new Macs, there is not support for the new Thunderbolt 4. So it's a little bit of a mixed gray area there. So Thunderbolt 3 still going to work just as it did before. All Thunderbolt 3 accessories except for eGPUs will all still work. And then any USB 4 peripherals will also work. Though right now, there's not really any USB 4 peripherals out there, at least the time of doing this video. So those will be coming down the line, but we have USB 4 here on the new MacBook Pros, as well as the new MacBook Airs. The third feature that we are going to be touting in this video is gonna be the improved FaceTime camera. Now, no, Apple did not jump to a 1080p FaceTime camera as we were hoping they would do, but they have made improvements. Thanks to its new ISP and its new processor, the FaceTime camera, while still 720p, has significant improvements than the previous generation. Here you can see in normal lighting as well as in this low lighting, the M1 Max simply has better quality, even still stuck at 720p. There's overall better noise reduction, low light performance, and just better color balance than what we saw before. This new Mac also has incredible SSD speeds, like seriously, absolutely incredible. So here you can see comparing the left one, our Intel Mac versus the new one there on the right, just a huge jump, more than twice the write speed on this machine. And the read speed is still incredible too, even if it's not twice the performance. So incredible, incredible new SSD speed. Now, a lot of this is enabled by the new M1 processor. That M1 processor is what has the new ISP for the camera. It has a new SSD controller in there. And of course, the M1 is home to the GPU and the CPU. If we run our Geekbench benchmark, both using Rosetta 2 as well as natively on the M1 processor, you can see the incredible gains in performance, especially on that single core performance. For example, really has prioritized uh, battery longevity and single core performance for these chips. These are entry level, lower end machines. So it's pretty awesome to see how powerful these guys are and how they stack up to a lot of other Macs that Apple uh, previously sold. And if we actually look at a real world test, Check this out. I'm gonna open up every single native app, every app here on my machine, every default installed app, and I'm gonna do it in less than 15 seconds, about 14 seconds, and these apps are literally opening faster than I can even click on them. It is absolutely absurd how fast that new M1 processor is. For number six, we have iOS apps. macOS Big Sur allows developers to offer up their own apps that they developed for iPhone and iPad and release them here on the Mac. But what is incredible about the new M1 based Macs is because it is Apple's own processor, you can run many, 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 or pretty much all uh, iOS apps natively right on the Mac. You can actually move over your package file from your iPhone to your iPad, drop it onto your Mac, and run it. We have seen a ton of great apps coming to the Mac, such as Darkroom and many others that you know originally started on iPhone and iPad, but are now available on the Mac. And of course, like I said, you can move apps over that you've already purchased on your iPhone or iPad, drop those ISP files onto your Mac and run them just like you're running them on your iPhone and iPad. Now, some things are a little bit wonky, but it's pretty awesome to be able to see any app that, you know, originally was confined to your iPhone or iPad to now work here on your Mac in full screen. It is pretty cool. Our final feature on our list of new features for the new Macs is the incredible new battery life. On the new MacBook Pro 13 inch, you can get up to 20 hours of battery life. 20 hours. On the MacBook Air, you're getting 18 hours, which is still pretty incredible in my opinion. Now, as far as what you can do in that 20 hours of battery life, that's gonna be watching movies in the TV app, but just surfing the web, you can still get 17 hours. This is really an all day machine. 
So what do you guys think? What is your favorite new feature of the updated MacBook Pro and the updated MacBook Air? Be sure to let me know over on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU and grab your machine down below.